The metabolic consequences are bi-directional. Research in a paper about 20 years ago found that low testosterone predicts development of metabolic syndrome in type 2 diabetes. So testosterone decline isn't just a consequence of metabolic disease, but it can also be a cause. Now here's the good news. Because so much of testosterone decline is driven by metabolic factors, lifestyle interventions can make a real difference. Let me walk through some of these key strategies that you can keep in mind if you're looking to try to reverse some of this. First of all, weight management. Weight loss may be the single most powerful intervention. Let me just put a plug in for my insulin IQ effort. If you feel like you need help with weight loss, that is a wonderful community structure to help you reverse weight gain. Studies show that significant weight loss can boost testosterone by approximately 30%. Why? Well, because you're addressing multiple mechanisms simultaneously. You're shrinking fat cells, so you're reducing aromatase activity, and you're improving insulin sensitivity, which lowers your insulin, which itself kind of removes the brakes from the testes in their testosterone production. So focus on lowering insulin as your primary mechanism for weight loss, and that will yield myriad multiple benefits. Next, exercise. Um, you have to just resistance train. Running aerobic exercise is fine, but I strongly encourage compound movements like squats or deadlifts. Anything you can do that is getting the body to a point of fatigue in its muscles. High intensity interval training is wonderful. Um, don't overtrain. That can lower things too much, in part because of a cortisol effect. So more is not always better. Make sure you have your rest days, but do something with resistance training. Now, I want to address something many of you have asked about, which is cold plunge. The relationship between cold exposure and testosterone is nuanced, and likely it's a matter of timing. The timing appears to matter enormously. Cold water immersion immediately after training may work against your testosterone gains. So resistance exercise can increase testosterone. Resistance exercise, then immediate cold exposure may blunt that response. However, if you flip them, um, cold exposure either separate from your workout or pre-workout, so doing it before your workout, may have a very different effect. And this is where I am relying a little more on anecdote, but including my own. When I started doing this, so it was cold exposure either alone or workout, I personally saw my testosterone decline well above 1,000. Um, that was just with morning exposure alone. I use a Morozka Forge ice bath and I absolutely love it. I highly recommend it. I'm, I'm very biased in favor of, their, of that particular ice bath. The key is that I keep my cold exposure separate from my resistance training sessions by at least a few hours just with my own schedule. If I had the ice bath in the same place where I do my resistance workouts, I would keep them more connected where it would be ice bath first, dry off, and then hit the workout. So if you're going to incorporate cold um, plunging, consider doing it on the non-training days or before your workout rather than after. Beyond the direct hormonal effect, cold exposure can offer other benefits like activating brown adipose tissue, which improves insulin sensitivity. And as we've discussed, better insulin sensitivity supports better testosterone production. So cold exposure could be a significant player in your effort to increase testosterone. Next is sleep. That is non-negotiable. Testosterone production peaks during sleep, particularly during REM cycles. Research has shown that restricting sleep to just five hours per night can reduce testosterone levels by 10 to 15%, even in young, healthy men, not just old guys. And then stress is another big one, which, but it's also a vague one. But suffice to say, if you're able to identify known causes of stress, do everything you can to control them. Frankly, the most relevant one is going to be sleep deprivation. Sleep deprivation increases cortisol and cortisol wages war on your testes, um, directly blocking your ability to produce testosterone. Finally, limit alcohol. Alcohol impairs testicular function directly and disrupts the hypothalamic pituitary axis, so that central signal coming from the brain. Heavy drinking can lead to testicular shrinkage and increased estrogen levels. So if you're drinking, to, to bump that down as low as you can get it. Now, what about testosterone replacement therapy or TRT? 
For men with confirmed low testosterone and significant symptoms, TRT can be very appropriate. However, it's important to understand the trade-offs. Exogenous or injected testosterone will suppress your own production. So your, the brain will see all that testosterone coming in and then send the signal to the testes that they're not needed. Because of that, I think a man who is trying to conceive, so if you and your wife are trying to have a baby, um, be very, very cautious with TRT use. If that stage of life has passed, then you can be a little more liberal with it. Let me leave you with this perspective. Male menopause or andropause, which is a better term, albeit an uncommon one, is real. The gradual decline in testosterone with age affects millions of men and has profound implications for quality of life, metabolic health, and, of course, longevity. Unlike female menopause, which represents the exhaustion of a finite resource, male hormonal decline stems from decreased cellular activity. But that does mean it is potentially modifiable. The metabolic connections we've discussed today, like mitochondrial health, insulin sensitivity, body composition, and I even touched on inflammation, it really represents some, uh, several points of intervention. You are not powerless against this decline. Every improvement in the aspects I just mentioned has the potential to support increased testosterone production. But of course, if you're concerned, just get tested. It's helpful to know your numbers, if for nothing else than to know what you can track. Uh, but this is one area where the science of metabolism and the science of endocrinology intersect beautifully. Again, those are two areas of profound interest for me. And this is an area where you have some real control over your health trajectory.